What's up everybody? Nate here. And in case you didn't notice, most Americans are broke. Like for instance, most Americans don't have anything in their savings account and even more of them have nothing invested for retirement. And honestly, this makes a whole lot of sense. Americans over the last two years have seen a lot of financial hardships. From stock market crashes to housing market booms and busts to record high inflation to recessions. And now in 2022, the United States might be headed towards another recession. Now, a recession in the United States, and honestly for the rest of the world, only creates a divide between the haves and the have-nots. But the biggest difference between the ones that have it all and the ones that don't have anything is financial education. I want you to prepare your finances for not only the next recession, but for anything and everything that comes at you in life. I want you to come out a winner anytime we have financial hardships. And I want you to gain more than you lose, but let's be honest, most Americans do not have a very good handle on their finances. And that's not really their fault. My generation of millennials wasn't really taught a lot about money, and the things that we were taught were definitely wrong and are not helping us today. Our economy is changing in 2022, and you have to change with it in order to be successful. So the things that worked in the 90s, early 2000s, 80s, and 70s is just not going to work today if you want strong finances and wealth down the road. So with that being said, is there anything you really can do to avoid financial ruin in 2022 and beyond? Well, luckily for you, there is always something that you can do. And today we're going to talk about the seven biggest reasons that most Americans are broke, how you can avoid these seven mistakes in the future and not be broke, and some things you can do right now to start growing your wealth instead of losing money every single day. But before I get into all of that, do me a quick favor and hit smash or destroy that thumbs up button below and ring that notification bell too. Both of those two things are completely free and they help to show me that you like this video and that you want to see even more just like it. Thank you so much for doing that. And now the first thing that keeps Americans broke in the United States is flexing. Americans in the US, well, we live in a spending culture. You always have to have the best of everything. We always have to be flashy so that way we can look rich instead of actually being rich. So Americans will go out and buy products. They will buy a whole bunch of things that they want right now. And having things is great. I want you to be able to buy all of the things that you want in life. But the problem is a lot of the things that we buy end up costing us way more money than they earn us. Now don't get me wrong. Not everything you buy in life needs to make you money, but the vast majority of Americans have nothing that makes them money other than their job. Now, if you want to be wealthy and you want to avoid the rat race and constantly be broke, you have to change your mindset. You have to understand that looking rich and all of the people that you see that look like they make millions upon millions of dollars are actually super broke. There have been countless stories of professional athletes who have made hundreds of millions of dollars over their career, but end up filing for bankruptcy just a few short years after they retire. The reason is because they didn't know how to handle their money and that is not going to change no matter how much money you get. It's nice to have things. Like I said, I want you to have things, but not at the expense of your financial journey. So you have to ask yourself what your needs and wants are in life. You need a car, but you want a luxury sports car. You need to eat, but you don't have to have a super fancy steak dinner every single night. Once you make this distinction and you stop flexing, whether it's for social media or for the people around you, you'll realize that you never really needed that stuff in the first place. And when you finally get it and can afford it later on down the road, it'll feel a whole lot better. The number two reason why most Americans are broke is because you probably save too much money. Now, over the past couple of years, Americans have figured out that they need to save money. Saving is great, but what I need you to do now is stop saving saving money. No, seriously, stop saving. Why are you saving so much? Now, don't get me wrong. A savings account is super important. You need a certain amount of savings in your bank account in order to protect yourself and in order to buy all of the things that you want in the future. This is why we save. We save to be able to afford things so that way we don't have to go into debt. It is very important to have a financial base with a savings account. The only way to protect your finances is if you have that savings base. 
case. Otherwise, if something happens in your life, you have a financial emergency or you need to buy something right now that's way too expensive, well, what do you do? I guess you can go into debt, but that's only going to weigh you down. Or you could just not buy it and make do, but both are not super great situations. This is why you have to be able to save a certain amount in order to protect yourself. In today's economy, I recommend around a two to $3,000 initial savings fund. This is going to protect you against most of life's disasters, like if you need a new AC or if your car breaks down. No, it's not going to protect you against anything, but if if you save around $3,000 and you have a $4,000 payment coming up, well, at least you can pay off most of that expense and you don't have to put all that $4,000 on credit. That's money that you couldn't afford in the first place. So you're basically just putting yourself behind in your financial journey. Now, once you've saved that initial short-term savings, now you wanna save up for the long-term. So this is really going to depend on your risk tolerance. You might wanna save three months to five months to six months or even a year plus. That's going to protect you if you lose your job or you lose a major loss of income, like from the death of a spouse. If you suddenly lose a whole bunch of money, you wanna have all of that money available to pay all of your bills. That's how you calculate your entire long-term savings. Take the number that you spend in bills and expenses every single month, and then multiply that by how many months you wanna protect yourself for. That will equal your long-term savings fund. But after you have that savings fund for the long-term and the short-term, you do not need to save anymore. In fact, saving beyond this point is just going to be a detriment to your finances. The first reason is because your money is just sitting there. It's not doing anything for you, so how can you expect it to continue to gain value in this economy? We have inflation at an over 40 year high right now. That means every single year, inflation is eating away at your finances. Your money that's just sitting in a bank account is losing buying power, which means when you go to use it 10, 20, and 30 years down the road, if you only keep saving, well, you're not gonna have as much as you think you will. Sure, you'll have the actual dollar amount, but the amount that those dollars can buy is a whole lot less. The wealthy understand that if you wanna build wealth and you wanna be able to protect yourself, your money has to gain value you and the only way to do that is if you start investing and that brings me to number three Americans are not investing. There's a good portion of Americans that have nothing invested and have no interest to. And there's also a good portion that are investing, which is great, but they're not investing nearly enough. In fact, they believe that they're on track to retire, but they're making some pretty big calculation errors. Most Americans are investing in one way, like say a 401k. There are so many people that have a 401k account. Now, a 401k has its pros and cons, but at the end of the day, the 401k was not meant to be your sole retirement vehicle. It's meant to significantly help you retire by giving you some exposure to things like stocks and bonds. But overall, the number that you get out of your 401k is probably not going to be enough to retire. And the reason is taxes. When you contribute to a 401k, you're putting money in that's tax free. It's only taxed when you remove that money from the 401k account. The taxes that we have today are probably not going to be the same in 30 and 40 years from now so we don't exactly know how much money is gonna get yanked from your 401k plan. The same goes for IRAs. Now, Roths, you actually contribute to post-tax, so they're a little bit different. But all of these accounts have contribution limits, so not only will you be hurt in taxes, but you can't exactly put as much as you want in forever. And then number two, you also have inflation. So inflation right now is really high. We don't know what it's going to be in the future. So if inflation keeps going up, then you're going to have to pull more out of your account. It's the same with the banking situation. 40 years from now, you might not have as much money as you think because the buying power goes down, which means you have to pull a lot more out, which means you have to invest a whole lot more today. Now, investing is not a get rich quick scheme. It's not something that you can do in the short term in order to build wealth right now. It's a long-term strategy, something that you have to work at for basically your entire life. Americans though, don't wanna wait. They don't want that payoff. They wanna use their money right now. And many of them see investing as a huge risk. And that is true. You are never guaranteed to make any money when you invest. So they'd rather use that money today instead of allocating a portion of their budget towards investing, that's never guaranteed. Well, they wanna put that money towards something else, like something that 
they want or something that they need. And I totally understand this, especially in 2022, when we have a stock market that is essentially failing. But what you have to understand is every single thing in life is a risk. There is a risk to investing. There is a risk to not investing. I know that if I put my money in a traditional bank account and I just let it sit there, well, it's going to continue to get eaten away by inflation. That isn't good, and I know that. However, I know that I can also get a partial return and possibly beat inflation if I put my money in the stock market or I diversify by investing in multiple different types of assets like stocks and bonds and commodities and real estate. Like I said, most Americans go through life never investing investing and you don't have to. But what you have to understand is if you don't invest, the chances of you getting wealthy are slim to none. Meaning most Americans will end up broke and stay broke for their entire lives. The third reason why most Americans are broke is because they finance everything. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I want you to have nice things, but I want you to be able to afford them first. Case in point, if you don't have enough money to buy something, then you shouldn't be buying it. This is where financing comes in handy. Many businesses and many banks have gotten people into the habit of buying things that are beyond their means. So for instance, if you walk into Home Depot or Lowe's and you want that really fancy fridge, but it's a little bit out of your price range, well, what do you do? Lowe's wants you to buy that fridge, so what they do is let you borrow money. They let you put it on credit and then finance all of the rest. You can essentially buy that fridge with putting nothing down, which means you're going to have to continue to pay, which means you're going to have to continue to pay interest. So you are making Lowe's and Home Depot richer while you are only getting poorer and more broke. Case in point, if you can't afford five of something, then you can't buy one of that thing. If you have to put money on credit or you have to set yourself back by taking on new debt just to get that fridge and it's not something that's absolutely necessary to your life, well, then you simply can't afford it. The problem is most Americans do this with everything. And now that we have the buy now, pay later sites, you can do this with everything. I remember a few years ago, I bought a pair of sunglasses. I think they were Ray-Bans and I literally could finance this $200 pair pair of Ray-Bans. I didn't have to pay anything up front. I would have to pay like 30 or $40 a month though. In 2022, you can do this with everything and it's growing and you have to protect your finances in the beginning because you do not want to overpay for everything. That's what you do when you take a whole lot of interest. So if you can't afford five of it, you can't afford one. And I mean, do you have the full money in your bank account to be able to buy the entire thing in full with cash? Now I want to clarify something here because there are some things in life that you're going to have to finance. One of the biggest things is a house and the reason being is because most Americans are never going to be able to have hundreds of thousands of dollars saved up in order to buy a house. So you can't possibly go off of the five to one rule. There are other things as well. So you're going to have to figure out what is the most important thing for you. Obviously housing is important. Food is important, but again, assess your wants and your needs here. If you absolutely need it to survive, well, then it might be worth financing. However, if it's something that you want, you definitely don't want to finance that pair of jeans. Next up, most Americans that fall into this financing trap usually take on a lot of debt and have a lot of credit card debt. And what they end up doing is making minimum payments on those credit cards every single month. And that's all they ever do while they continue to spend on them. Minimum payments are going to be the death of you and your finances. All of that debt is only getting more expensive. In 2022, the Federal Reserve has started to raise their benchmark interest rates, meaning those adjustable rate interest rates for your credit cards and other debt is only growing, making all of the money that you have on those cards a lot more expensive and harder to pay off. If you only continue to make minimum payments and you continue to use them at the same amount of time, well, then you're putting yourself back in your financial journey. All of that debt is growing faster than any of your investments. So for instance, if you invest your money, if you save, if you don't flex anything, well, if you still have all of this debt, then you're going to run into problems. 
Usually, credit cards especially have an interest rate on them that's 15 to 25%. Chances are none of your investments are going to give you that same return, so you're losing a whole lot of money here. If the average return in the stock market is around 10%, so every single dollar you put in is growing 10% over time, well then that's great, except for your credit card debt is making you lose money by 15 to 20%. So really you're in the hole by five to 10%. 10%. You have to pay down all of this credit card debt. So if you have credit card debt right now and you want to stop being broke, you have to stop spending on your credit card until you know how to use it, until you have them all paid off, you can't spend on a credit card anymore. What I want you to do is look into ways to getting those payments down as fast as possible. Now the two best ways are the debt avalanche method or the debt snowball method. The snowball method means you're going to pay off the smallest bills in terms of total value you first. You're going to put as much money as you can towards those smaller bills. That way you pay them off faster. And your other bills, well, you're just going to make minimum payments. Until you have the smaller bills paid off, then you can reallocate your funds towards those bigger bills. Now, the opposite is the debt avalanche method. You're going to pay off the biggest bills in terms of interest rate, and then only make minimum payments to your smaller bills. That way you're paying off the biggest things first, and that way those big interest rates are coming down so your money can start making you money with your investments. Next up, we have your spending habits. Now, this is super important for your financial journey because you need to know how much money you're making and where every single dollar you make goes every single month. Now, the most important thing here to understand is that if you make $50,000 a year or whatever you make every single year, that doesn't mean you should spend $50,000. Spending more than you earn is how people stay broke forever. People go out and finance things. People want those new fancy things, so they end up spending all of this money and they take on all of this debt. Well, what happens is they can't pay it off and now their net worth is basically negative. That is a hard thing to come back from. So if you make $50,000 a year, don't spend $50,000. Try spending under that if you can. In order to do this, you need to know where all of your money is going. And the simplest way to do that is to create a budget. Now, there are two different plans that I want to talk about. One is the 75-15-10 plan, and the other is the 50-30-20 plan. In the 75-15-10 plan, you are going to allocate 75% of every dollar that you earn towards spending. Spending on things that you need and you want. Everything from your bills to all of that Gucci, 75% of that is going to go towards all of it. Next, you have 15%. You're going to take 15% of everything that you earn, and you're going to start investing it. You have to start investing even if it's just a small amount right now and then finally you have 20 20 percent is going to go towards saving you have to build that savings account because if you don't your investments and everything else you have built is eventually going to collapse at the first sign of trouble now you do the same thing in the 50 30 20 plan the 50 30 20 plan is if you don't have a whole lot of obligations if you don't have a whole lot of responsibilities then you're able to allocate more towards investing and saving you'll have a lot less for spending, but you also don't have a whole lot of bills or a family or a spouse that relies on you. If of course you have all of those things and you want to follow the 75, 15, 10 plan, you're going to be spending most of your income towards your family and your debts and your bills and things that you want because you have more responsibility in life and that is okay. But what's not okay is not creating a budget and then being confused every single time your money disappears. And finally, we have to talk about your mindset. If you have the right mindset, no matter what you do, you will come out a winner. Even if you lose, a loss is just a lesson. If you have the wrong mindset, then you'll always make an excuse for why you don't have something or why you can't do something. Life is hard for all of us. We all have things going on. We all have different amounts of education and money that we're all starting from. Life isn't fair, but you shouldn't let that completely stop you. If anything, that should make you work a lot harder. At the end of the day, your finances start with you. You have to grow yourself and learn more if you want to continue your financial journey and actually start building wealth. You have to ask yourself, what do you really want in life? I know it can be difficult sometimes to answer that question because we all get in this funk. I know how it is. 
A lot of millennials came out of school and got a job, and that job paid them pretty well at the time, and they got pretty complacent. They stayed at that job and they continued to make money, but they lost a lot of ambition. It's not just millennials. Many generations of the past have fallen into this trap as well, and that is a problem with our society. We get a whole lot comfortable in the things that we're doing, and we stop growing, we stop pursuing our dreams, we stop pursuing our hobbies, and that bleeds into our finances. Now when we have problems, whether it's at our job, in our relationships, well, we don't know how to handle them. So we start falling into these debt traps. And again, that is something that is really hard for many Americans to climb out of. But what I'm saying is that there is a way out. The wealthy are always looking for an opportunity. They're always looking for ways they can get ahead in life. And they're always looking for ways that they can better themselves, their community, and their finances. Planning ahead is going to help you in every single avenue in life so you have to start doing it now if you want to have any sort of success and of course in order to have success you have to define what success means to you I'm not saying that you have to be rich and wealthy and be a multi-millionaire or a multi-billionaire that is not the point of this video the point is to magnify your finances to be responsible and take responsibility for every single dollar that you earn at the end of the day your money is your problem and if you want more of it then that's your problem too. Many of us stop learning and stop growing and that leads us to be broke a lot later in life. Just because you're comfortable now and just because you're having success today does not guarantee that you're going to have those things in the future. And if you don't make a plan whether it's for your finances or for your relationships or at your job or anything else in life which again is completely unpredictable well then you're going to end up losing it all. And I don't want you to lose it all, which is why taking control now and understanding your finances and truly dedicating yourself to financial education is going to make you a winner, not only during the next recession, but in your everyday life in 2022 and beyond. Oh, and you'll stop being broke and wondering where all of your money is going every single month. But now I want to hear from you on this issue. What do you think about these seven things that keep Americans broke every single day? Is there something I missed? Do you have any words of advice for somebody who's going through these struggles right now? And do you think these are going to continue in the future? Do you think Americans are going to become more financially educated or will we continue to see these problems basically forever? Because that's how our culture works. Whatever your thoughts are, leave a comment below before you go. But that is it for today's business and financial news breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to stay up to date with all of the top business and financial news from around the country, our team puts together a free daily newsletter and you can subscribe to it by clicking the link in this corner right here. And if you want to stay up to date with me and everything else happening in the business and financial world, I'm putting out updates seven days a week over here on this channel and I've actually got another one ready for you right here. So be sure to check that out before you go. That is it for me, everybody. Be kind out there and I'll see you all in the next one.